Leo. How are you? It's me, Lauren B. Welcome into the Untitled Tarot. So I have two decks that I want to use for you today. I have the Shaman Stream Oracle, which I pulled out a, a bit of a general energy for you already. And I have the Rider Weight Tarot, very classic and traditional, that I'd like to do for you. There actually is, it's actually kind of a funny combination now that I'm thinking about like your general energy because the Shaman Stream Oracle it's very bright, it's very poppy, it's it's kind of like pop art, like it's it's very expressive as a deck, whereas when we look at kind of like the Rider weight, it's a little bit more muted, right? Um, and that kind of seems to be like the difference in the energy that you are in and the energy that you are kind of being called into right now. So I kind of just want to pray and we'll kind of get on into it. Your first card is kind of hysterical to me. Um, let's do it. Father God, thank you for bringing me and my Leo's in for this reading. I ask that you give me wisdom, clarity, and discernment to deliver these messages accurately for Leo's highest of love, light, alignment, and assignment. We praise you. We love you. We thank you always. We give you all the glory and the honor for these messages. To the utmost high, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, I just called you Taurus. Leo, I'm sorry. Leo. Um, so the first card that we have coming out for you is this joyful muse inspiration now this feels like a separate character that feels like it is approaching you leo this could be very much representative of a person in your life someone that is i want to say jovial but the word juvenile is coming up in my mind like someone that is maybe like a little bit silly Maybe they're a little bit, maybe they're an Aquarius. Uh, maybe they're like a little bit unconventional, right? They don't take life too seriously. They don't take themselves too seriously. Um, even like some Piscean energy. Like they like to play, they like to create. And it feels like they are trying to like beckon you into enjoying that energy with them. Again, this could be a person. This could also be um, a spiritual energy, a guide of sorts coming in, really wanting you to kind of finger paint in the midst of your life right now. Play, dance, sing, do all of this stuff. Whereas you are coming out as the woodwives, adaptability. But meanwhile, you are being represented kind of by this tree trunk. So again, you two have very different energies. It feels like you're trying to be adaptable, like you're trying in general to be kind of flexible and open-minded in your life. But much like a tree, even when the wind comes, it can only bend so much, right? Now, there's a feeling of like responsibility and just kind of feeling stuck where you are, right? Like a lot of obligations. It reminds me of like if I looked at one tree in comparison to a whole forest, like there's not a lot of places to go, right? It's not like a tree can just get up and walk. It's it's pretty planted where they where it is. And so you too, Leo, may be kind of planted in a certain situation or in an environment or in a phase in your life and you are doing your best to be flexible, but it's like there's only so much wiggle room that you have. And then meanwhile, the birds are going bananas today, Leo. But meanwhile, here's this little kitty cat, like there's this joyful muse energy that's trying to come in and sort of tempt you or like even like seduce you into this very like playful energy which you may just not feel is possible for you or you don't have the time in your schedule for it right so it is kind of this funny tug of war but this joyful muse is coming out with uh another perspective they would like to talk to you about something leo and it has to do with this mindful oh, there's a blue jay it has to do with this mindful card group think now, very much like one tree being stuck in the forest with a bunch of other trees, there seems to be a connection here with you, Leo, about what you are able to do, what you think is possible, ideas or perspectives that you have are very much being influenced by your community or by the group at large that you might not realize that you may be recycling or reiterating a lot of the same perspectives, maybe even like a lot of the same stresses that a lot of the people around you are. But meanwhile, that like might not be your portion right now. This mindful card, it also looks very bright and it looks very happy and it looks like there's a lot of abundance and stuff here. So this also might be you, Leo, trying to get yourself unstuck or create some kind of mobility in your life. But the way that you're going about it is by consulting the group think. 
how other people say manifestation or abundance work, how other people say a certain work has to get done, the blueprint laid out by other people. And seemingly it has worked for a lot of other people, but I don't know how well it's working for you. And it's interesting that this card is the wood wives, which kind of gives me the impression that like you're kind of committed to like whatever strategy or whatever ideas has been presented to you, perhaps by a larger group. But the fact that it's mind full and not mindfulness tells me that there might just be too many other energies around you right now. They might be clogging up the channel that you have to your higher self, to spirit, to your own urges and desires, right? It's that kind of thing. Not being really led by your own strings without really realizing it, right? So that's part of the reason why this joyful, okay, my left ear, okay. And a cardinal, a blue jay and a cardinal within five minutes of each other. All right. So that's part of the reason why this joyful muse is coming in today for you, Leo. Again, it could be a spiritual energy um, trying to interact with you. It could also just be a very intuitive friend that you have that, again, doesn't take things so seriously, is a little bit more unconventional or experimental. And they're trying to bring you into this, gar this garden of Venus, right? It's funny because Venus is in retrograde right now, but the energy for you is that Venus is in full bloom, rest and renewal it's like this muse is saying leo there's a better way like i know everyone else is stressing out like i know everyone else is kind of going off this five-step program to abundance i know this is how everyone else thinks and this is the path that a lot of them are taking but there's like a different route for you something that seems a little bit more fun something that allows you to kind of clear out everyone else's energy everyone else's perspectives the way everyone else's blueprint and just kind of lets you get back to like your pure raw potential possibility your own energy because your energy is really fertile that's the thing but it doesn't look it in this card and it kind of reminds me like if you were to spill something that was harmful or at the very least not beneficial in the middle of a forest, right? Or think about like an oil spill, right? Like your energy is very pure, but if there's energies in the environment that are kind of chunky, they're clogged up, they may be conflicting, they may not work for everyone, right? That's in your atmosphere and then you're breathing that in, right? And it makes it harder for you to really feel joyful, to feel like you're fertile, like you're growing, right? You, it will make you feel like you are stuck in place more. And that is why this jo joyful muse is coming in for you today, whether it's a spiritual energy or whether it is a person in your life who just intuitively knows that you might be getting caught in the cogs a little bit. You are leaning towards them. So even though you are, again, very kind of planted or committed to following whatever kind of process you're already in, there is something about what they are saying to you that does seem intriguing because they look like they're having a real good time. Um, if this is a spiritual energy, I'm just noticing the instrument right here that you may be, if you do like shuffle mancy and stuff or on the radio, you might have like really kind of fun or like poppy songs, songs from your childhood. The Wedding Singer. Songs from the Wedding Singer. Um, I don't know. That's for someone. I don't know who that is, but that is the, what, go watch the Wedding Singer, something like that. Um, and so it almost is the idea of like they're not doing what like everyone else is doing. Like I'm not totally sure about this advice. Like this might not be a good time to like go play, but I kind of want what they're having because they look like they're enjoying themselves much more than I am right now. Let's, and it's a master number. 33 is a master number. So it feels like they know what they're doing. That's the thing. Like they may come forward as just like a proper fool, but they, there's a method. There's a method to the madness here, Leo. So let's see, let's see what else wants to come out in the tarot. The, the birds are going crazy today. I cannot tell you. Sparrow, a blue jay, that cardinal still right there. Cardinals often talk about like family or like ancestral energies for me. This could be like, for some of you, this could be like a child, like your child or a younger sibling or a niece or a nephew, something like that. It's very much of that, another blue jay, um, like out of the mouth of babes, 
right? It's like, there have been so many times in my life where I've been grumpy or I'm like, I'm just like, just bogged down, right? With like life and responsibilities. And like my nieces or nephews are like, come play. I'm like, I don't have time to play right now. But eventually like they win me over, like, and I take the time and I'll go and do it. And by the end I'm giggling and it's, and it's like, I needed that. Like I needed to kind of get down on the ground floor and like be a little kid and crawl all over like I'm a dinosaur, right? Just to like shake it all off. So there, there again, there is a method of, of to their madness here. Ten of Cups, Ten of Cups, look at that. The community at large, feeling fulfilled within the community, feeling a part of the community. Part of what this Woodwives and this Mindful, this group think, it feels as though, in a way, Leo, subconsciously, perhaps, you may be trying to operate in the belief systems or the skill sets. It feels like you're trying to fit in with this group thing. And again, this might not be something that you're consciously doing. This might be really kind of under the radar for you, but it might be that you are Leo. You love to be around people, right? It's like you really thrive on personal contact. So there might be this aspect of, where, of you that wants to feel like you're more a part of the community, that you're not set out, right? And maybe if you take on some of their um, strategies or, you know, kind of explore some of their belief systems or kind of do a little bit of what they're doing. Like it just might help you like assimilate, right? It's not like you're trying to abandon your identity, but it's a feeling of really wanting to assimilate into a very vibrant community where it's like you feel like really deeply connected, but it's a little bit like apples and oranges here. The contrast is a little bit too big. And again, it's kind of at this point, doing a little bit of a disservice to yourself. It might just be making you feel a little more excluded or a little more isolated or a little more different, which is why the most different unconventional energy is coming forward to go, no, Leo, like, let's get that out. Like, let's just wipe the, the whole table clear of that and kind of like, let's start again. Let's start about like our idea of what community is for you. The Ten of Cups, it talks about family and kids and generations, but it also talks about your groups and your your friends and your spiritual community at large, like everyone coming together. What is it for you? Is it one that just kind of naturally sort of melts around you? Or is it one that you have to try and squeeze into or fit into? Is that real fulfillment? Is that like a meaningful connection to you, right? Because when we look at the cups as a suit, it's also talking about connecting to life how we connect to life in a really meaningful way through our emotions, right? Um, and your emotions is also where you have all of your creativity. And I almost feel like you have been maybe biting your tongue about some opinions that you have um, because maybe they don't really mesh with the group thing that well or some feelings that you have because you don't feel as though they'll be responded to by the group, right? It's uh, the idea of not really wanting to make any waves, which is kind of unusual for you, Leo, which is sort of the point of this muse. That being said, Leo, energy is fluid. So we could very much be talking about you as this joyful muse. And you may intuitively sense that there's someone around you who is maybe falling into a little bit of group think, right? Um, sort of that parrot energy or that they may be trying to take on aspects that aren't really organic to them or that you might just notice that they feel a little bit weighed down, right? Um, and that like there is another solution and you might just be trying to come in and, and give them a little advice or cheer them up or just get them to shake it off, right? It could, this could be you or this could be an energy that is coming in for you. You kind of have to decide for yourself which sort of side of the board that you're on. But this Ten of Cups is very much like an invitation to kind of really think about what community and fulfillment and friendship and love, like what it means for you and what you must sacrifice, if anything, in order to feel a part of something that is bigger than you. And if you have to sacrifice aspects of yourself, is it worth it? Is that really the group for you? right? Because there are 8 billion people on the planet. We have the internet and anything's possible, right? And I do see the Ace of Swords in reverse at the bottom of the deck, which tells me, Leo, that you maybe don't have a firm grasp on this concept yet for yourself, right? Especially if you were bullied as a kid or you felt left out a lot as a kid, you might have naturally just learned how to kind of blend in with people, even though as a Leo, like, you are kind of intended to stand out, 
right? Um, it's this feeling of not being wanted. Um, maybe this goes back to your childhood. Maybe you dealt with some neglect or you were kind of like me, you were a latchkey kid. So you spent a lot of time by yourself all the time. So it's this feeling of wanting to be wanted or wanting to be needed or special or important or all of that stuff, right? Um, and so sometimes that can affect the way that we move in the world and the people that we try and align ourselves with, all of that stuff, right? I don't know how often you've kind of explored this topic for yourself in relation to your own life, but it's almost like the the quick little quiz or homework assignment, like before all of the play that wants to come in. The joyful muse is like, hey, let's look at this for a second because there might be something in here that is kind of explaining why this may be happening. And if we just kind of look at it real quick, we could totally just make a different a different decision. We can go and play after we do that. Once we put our shoes back. Three of cups. Yeah. It might be a smaller group, Leo. You, again, you really thrive in a group setting. You thrive on a stage. Like you, when there's a lot of hustle and bustle and social activity and energy around you, you really do thrive in that. But you might be moving into a season where less is more, where it's quality over quantity, right? Because in this Three of Cups, they're kind of having like a shared accomplishment, right? They're cheersing to each other. They kind of found each other. There's like a harvest at all of their feet, meaning that there's a sense of equality here between them as well. Now, they all are bringing something different to the table, right? It's like one of them is bringing kind of a lot of mental capacity, right? Like the ideas, man. And then, you know, this one in the red it has a lot of the passion and the energy and kind of that forward momentum and this one in the white has more of a spiritual perspective and is able to see things like really purely like, but they all bring something to the table. They all sow equally and they all reap equally. They don't have to sacrifice anything. They can come to the table whole and there's less of them, but the quality of the experience that they're having is more. It's better. It's, it's fulfilling and satisfying. Well, Four of Swords. So, Leo, now might be a good time. And, you know, this is coming up right underneath this Garden of Venus, Rest and Renewal. And the Four of Swords talks a lot about rest. Sometimes, again, as, as we were mentioning before, you feel like you have a lot of obligations, or you feel like you're really busy, or you're just trying to stay on top of stuff. I would invite you to sit down and really think what is and is not an obligation to you right now. I, we all have to go out into the world. We all have to make money. We all have to do the people thing, right? But oftentimes what the Four of Swords asks us to do, it's to slow down. It is to rest. It's to recuperate our energy. And the Four of Swords also talks a lot about reflection and really reflect. Sometimes, especially fire people, wands people, sometimes you get an idea and you just go with it. And sometimes you don't have time to reflect on who you are or what you're doing and where you come from and where you're going, right? Because you're always kind of on the move. And sometimes you don't hit this point until you hit burnout. And so it's like before you hit burnout, like if it's possible, it's the end of the year, maybe recheck your schedule and see like what truly is an obligation. And if it's not, maybe see if you can push it aside for a little bit. So that way you can have this time to rest, right? And part of what this rest is, um, it's, finding nourishment, particularly through creativity, connecting with nature, maybe going outside, playing some music, dancing around in your underwear, painting a picture. I know they've been on my ass about getting back to painting because it's a good outlet, right? It's a good way to express your emotions or get out excess energy, like all of that kind of stuff. Maybe gardening, getting some new plants. I'm sure some of your plants need water. I know you got a plant in your room right now, Leo, that probably has needed to be repotted for the last six months. Like, why don't we do some of that stuff? Watch The Wedding Singer, like watch Harry Potter, like have some of this like inner child play moment, which is productive rest. Sometimes when we think of rest, we think of it purely as being sedentary, but oftentimes rest can be play right? Um, and so that seems to be really what you are being invited to do by this joyful muse and or what you may be inviting someone else who is near and dear to you to do as well. And in those moments, I think you're going to have a little bit of this aha, right? 
this ace of swords being able to get turned upright. Sometimes when you're busy um, crafting or gardening or washing the dishes or doing laundry, something like that, it's like the monkey mind is busy and it allows the subconscious to find solutions to problems or reveal kind of root causes of things, right? Um, and brings them right up to the surface. And so I think in these moments of this productive, playful rest, you're going to have this kind of eureka moment of, oh, that's why I do that. Like, that's why I've been trying to do that. Again, that four of swords. Oh, I can totally be approaching this from a different way that is less stressful or, or requires me to sacrifice less of myself it could be easier than this right okay and then you kind of proceed on from there so leo this is what i have for you this week i hope that this was helpful for you and supportive in this process that you're making your way through i am going to go and do an extended reading so if you're interested in your extended reading or if you are interested in your December monthly reading, those links are going to be down below for you. Consider joining us on Patreon. I like to say it's a bit like Costco. We have the, all the bulk content, readings, all of that stuff. I do host a spiritual development workshop, which we are very excited about. And I do offer a personal reading. So if you'd like one of those, my information is in the description box. I love you very much. I appreciate you being here. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.